Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly Babin with Art Legal LLC and today we're doing sort of an artist talk but with someone different. So instead of an artist, we're with Jason Zhang and he is the co-founder and CEO of Planet XR, which is a really interesting tech startup that involves a lot of artists um, and kind of new technology. started my career um, as a product designer and then uh, I'm now actually working as a product manager at Planet XR. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then I'm at uh, Kim, you know, we're working together at this company. Planet XR is um, an AR platform. So it's a creation platform. And we actually use this very special technology called visual positioning system that actually creates a persistent layer uh, on top of real world. So pinned into a specific location. Uh, you know, to make it simpler is basically, you know, um, you know the, basically you're turning, you know, the city into a living canvas. It's no longer a collection of building and street. Uh, it's a play around, you know, where uh, artists can unleash their imagination, bring their credibility, their models, their artwork into the real world. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then they're able to express themselves freely and people can interacting with the AR digital contents uh, in the real environment. I think that's um, a great way of explaining it. I love that you say like a living digital canvas. Um, for people that don't know, though, can you explain just a little bit about what we're actually going to see on this app? Mm -hmm. uh, on the reality is a way that you're able to see things, you know, um, it's, you're actually able to see the physical environment, the actual environment, but using AR to augment the, you know, you're uh, maybe adding more information, maybe adding virtual content, and you know, to make uh, your um, your world uh, looks better or more uh, have more information. <laughs> yeah. So how is how can an artist um, or somebody that's using the app actually view the artwork? Do they have to have like some sort of device, like um, goggles or? Uh, iPhone. If you want access to all our uh, AR contents in Planet XR, uh, you just need to download in, uh, a mobile app and you walk around the street, you're able to see multiple content uh, that are pinned to that street or that building. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, how you able to use it. Uh, but we're planning to uh, developing an AR glasses version uh, that are going to um, come soon. Um, yes, you know, like right now we, this is become a creation platform for a lot of artists. But at the very start, you know, at the beginning, when we created Planet XR, it's more of a social focusing platform. So we have this air message as a way to live comment any places. So, you know, empower people to um, express themselves you know, freely. Uh, you know, you can literally like adding a virtual sub bubble above your head when you add any of our, right? If you're in the art museum, you can share your feeling about piece of artwork. Uh, you know, you can share a review about a restaurant. Uh, and yeah, and then that message can be viewed by multiple people. So our people can read your mind in a way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can use it in multiple places, you know, public area to a spas, you know, or, or schools. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very easy way for people to uh, engage in this kind of AR world. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, like since we, um, uh, so we're talking with a lot of artists, digital artists and public artists. Uh, and we realize there's a lot of problem that currently encounter every single day. Uh, so that's why you know, we want to address some of the problem. Uh, and um, so that's, uh, so this uh, plan has tried to become a, a creation metaverse platform. Yeah, I think that that's kind of what attracted me to the company as I saw some of the different posts on your Instagram and things like that. And one of them is Yum and incorporated into the art exhibition. There's different um, AR aspects. And then also 
the air message, like you were saying, where people can leave this air message. It's digital. Anybody can see it with their phone and interact with each other. Um, something else I really like that you said is that this is really started as a social platform. It still is. It's a social platform um, for artists and the public to interact. And it really, you know, is about that freedom of expression. So we've dealt with, you know, a lot of different artists. And I think some of them had different challenges that this was acting as a solution to you. Uh, I know earlier today, we were just in a meeting um, talking about um, public arts with an institution that saw a lot of potential uh, uses for this app as well. So what have you seen that's really been like, oh my gosh, this is going to be great for people to communicate, to get their art out there? What what kind of problems and solutions are you seeing? Mm -hmm. Right now, um, for public artists, they are actually facing a lot of challenge in the past again and right now. You know, um, any uh, cities basically require you to submit a proposal to getting approval to using the land, using the space. And that usually, you know, takes somewhere between six months to years uh, for permanent artwork. The entire process of getting something uh, submitted and then to getting actual uh, constructed it took about five years, four to six years. It's a very, very long process for a lot of artists. A lot of artists just want to get their artwork to the display and showcase to anyone and then the message they want to uh, to communicate, right? But uh, right now, the process is it's just getting very, very long. Um, so this kind of a platform really enables public artists to think about a brand new way that they can use to replacing and actually enhancing their uh, public artwork. Right now, they don't need to learn any you know, coding. It's no code platform, so they can just drag and drop and place in their artwork any they want, uh, whether it's indoor public arts or outdoor public arts. The artwork can be persistent, so you know uh, you don't need to um, uh, actually keep a QR code or anything. It's just going to automatically recognize that space, uh, and uh, you, you know it doesn't actually cost anything from the public art side. We also talk with a lot of digital artists as well, uh, and a lot of you know NFT artists. They're looking for like new way to display their artwork. Uh, a lot of re uh, frustration, you know. Um, you know, came from, you know, like if they, you have a 3D model, uh, NFT, and usually they're getting displayed in a monitor, in you know, our gallery or something, but you're not able to put your digital NFTs in your living room or keep it somewhere. Uh, and this is going to be a great way to helping digital artists to display their artwork uh, in AR. You know. Yeah, I love that as a curator and art advisor, that's one of the most common problems like I hear about with NFTs as, hey, you know, we have them, but we want to be able to show them in new and different ways. So this is, I think, one of the coolest ways you can show it where it doesn't have to be like on a monitor or, you know, something you have to pull up. It's literally like there and you can kind of interact with it and it's involved in the space. So um, I think it's an awesome way and an awesome use um, for NFTs and the other digital art that um, we've talked about too, all the different 3D modeling. Like um, that's something I'm seeing in fashion a lot right now is mm -hmm. like the AR capabilities. So I think that this is just like, uh, you know, really great for artists in the art world as well. Um, one of the cool things uh, we heard earlier today was like the concept of like graffiti as well and doing, you know, graffiti art. It's a way of that like public expression, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think the 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 key of, um, uh, you know, uh, geospatial AR is the ability to express himself, to, you know, um, tell the untold story but in a way that is not um, restricted and it's also not actually damaging the environment or harming the city. Uh, and uh, we actually, you know, seeing a lot of people uh, like graffiti artists love this type of idea since this is giving me, giving, sorry, this is giving them a new, you know, uh, 
to you know a new opportunity you know to make their artwork you know displaying in more places and easy and uh easier and also a, a safer method of doing uh graffitis uh yeah and and also like this type of things you know also really resonate you know um with a lot of artists like first nation artists right like they there are a lot of their cultures is associated with that you know certain river or mountains or certain land uh and with just facial AR, they're just able to share all their culture and then their history uh stories you know what's the world you know what is um you know individual artwork displaying at individual side um and this is really something they felt like it's a really um you know it's like their power in their hand you know they don't have to request any permissions anymore um they a lot of them you know artists telling me oh i dream about building this type of application you know for years and it's just very challenging and difficult to building this type of platform uh yeah yeah i love that about this company so much um i also think that um something that had touched on um when we were talking to one of our other arts organization was they asked like okay but can this be curated can we have our own individual like selection of art um and I think the solution you had talked about for that is that there's kind of a capability of like channels is that right right uh this is going to be a upcoming uh features in our roadmap we are actually thinking about to make it more like an AR version of TikTok right an AR version of Instagram that you do own your own channel we call it map planet so that's a special uh, uh, page that displays all your artworks in a single map. So any of your followers can actually follow you and uh, any uh, viewers can actually follow you and keep getting the latest update, uh, the, your latest artwork getting displayed. Right now, there's uh, there are like platform, you know, like Instagram or YouTube, but there's no specific artwork that, uh, you, you know, focus on doing AR art. And this is going to be a great way to getting connected with the viewer and the uh, artist. And artists can, you know, feel, you know, feel free to um, uh, sharing their artwork with their audience in Planet Extra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's kind of interesting that this is going to be something that's useful both to artists and then the organizations like we actually this is something unique because it can be used outdoors or inside like an art gallery mm -hmm. uh that's true uh it, it, it a lot of platform that you think before either they work indoors or they only working outdoors uh because it's quite challenging to do geospatial um and positioning uh in indoor environments but we actually is the only platform that able to have both features, uh, both environment, uh, both the scenario you would use this, this uh, platform um, easily. Uh, our company has been building product to helping our artists. Uh, but now those are, I would say, you know, considered as easy to use or uh, 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 or, or simple, like uh, platform like Snapchat or. Spark AR, they do require you to install specific PC or Mac application studios to uh, to be able to create any AR experience. There are also other platforms that utilizing like image tracking, so it's track a specific image, but that also requires you to go onto their uh, website. But for us, everything is going to be on device, so you can do everything on your mobile. Whatever you want to place, whether that's a, a mural, whether that's a 3D model or message, uh, you create a, you know, on the go. You know, if you on the road, you think this place is wonderful, you have something to express, you have something to show, you can create it right away. This is, you know, never heard of, uh, of you know, like in the any of other AR application. Um, and this is very simple, easy to use. You click a plus button, you select anything in the model library, or you create a new message, just like a Twitter, sending a Twitter or sending an Instagram. You have this AR uh, model and AR messages displayed in AR uh, in under a minute, and you can release it, and that's going to be public available for anyone who went to that same site. 
Yeah, I think um, the ease of use also has kind of attracted a lot of younger generational users as well. It's almost like, um, like has that playful game aspect to it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we do see we our platform has a lot of younger users using it. And especially, we, we actually even have a, 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 a presentation on one of the high school and then the, 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 all the students love about it, teacher love about it. Uh, there's some of the educational aspect in there and then people playing around with and making fun of each other using AR. Uh, with a teacher <laughs> and uh yeah this is definitely something we never uh, didn't expect uh but yes this is something that um students and, and teenagers and um younger users love about this type of idea and and also this is a great way to attracting younger audience so if you have businesses or art gallery uh ar is always something that um younger audience love uh, and just by seeing, you know, there's tremendous trend, you know, among using the AR filters and uh, AR shoppings. Uh, yeah, and AR art is going to be a major part, I think, for the uh, next few years. Yeah, I've seen um, a lot of parents kind of avoid going into certain like art institutions and galleries with young children because you know you have so many concerns as a parent and are they going to be interested in this you're worried about them running over and you know breaking it and something like that so I think that this is a really cool way to be able to introduce young children to art as well and kind of a fun format for them for sure so mm -hmm. um another question for you is just kind of off off the subject of artists but for you personally I am I'm kind of wondering how do you see this like fit in right now in the art world we see a lot of different things from um not just augmented reality but we see a lot of conversation about um AI and NFTs and web3 and the metaverse so do you see this as equally as controversial? Do you see it as something that's going to stay as a lasting thing? How does it tie into all of that that's going on? Mm -hmm. um, I would say AR is a little bit different. Uh, there isn't like one thing uh, going to be uh, you know, replacing another, like Web3. Uh, I would say it's kind of like a combination. It just, it's, it, you know, it's really uh this is there's all sorts of technology uh it's about like whether your product wants to integrating or uh, uses this type of things the reason we wanted building like ar platform is we saw there's a tremendous potential and this is um, um definitely going to be a revolution um technology that's going to be replacing your mobile phones and replacing your laptop as well um and Five years ago, all those AR assets cost us about $3,000, $4,000. But right now, a consumer AR glasses only costs about $500 and $600. In 2022, uh, there's 20 new AR glasses came out wow. last year. Uh, and there's going to be more came out this year. And this is going to become something that eventually, you know, Everyone can wear AR glasses in some form. Um, and all those AR contents, you know, it's going to be part of your life. Any, uh, you know, digital content in your house or on the street will all be very visible for everyone, right? And uh, you can, you're going to see like a new city or digital and virtual, uh, digital and, and, and physical environment merge. Uh, silly um and uh yeah that's that's the what we see you know like um uh, you know in 10 years what's going to happen like um in the uh uh the city development and in the how people using the technology uh to answer your question about ai and web3 uh we do see a lot of potential in a lot of ai technology as well as the web3 um uh, so for AI, we actually 
are experimenting with a lot of generative AI technology and tools to just helping people who uh, who are haven't had a lot of experience in 3D modeling, but then not familiar or knows uh, how to use 3D modeling software because because it does have a very uh, 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 hard you know learning curve. You know you got <laughs> to learn yeah. for a couple of weeks and practice for a couple of months. Uh, we this is something you know we trying to use in generated AI to help um, you know casual users or regular people who have the ability to easily creating any 3D models. Um, and that's in the pipeline. That's something we are uh, working on. And in terms of Web3, you know, um, something we in particular we're looking into are the NFT. Uh, we, uh, we see there's a lot of potential and we think there's a lot of things that we can um, uh, uh, in integrating into our platform as well. Mm -hmm. The reason is, you know, uh, we do want helping artists to uh, make a living and build their businesses on our platform. We do want them to be uh, able to, uh, um, you know, make a revenue when they display their artwork. Uh, and there are going to be more news, you know, coming out from Planet XR. Uh, uh, stay tuned for, for those new updates for uh, around those features. Absolutely. And I think um, something that you're touching on is one of the biggest problems we've heard for artists is getting their artwork seen, um, getting it out there and being able to make a living from it. So this is a great solution where artists anywhere in the world can, you know, have access, you know, in a new way and be seen by, by new people. So I think it's a great solution for that. Um, something else we kind of, you know, haven't really dove deep into before but I, something I'm seeing in the arts fashion and luxury goods is sustainability and the movement towards this so in a lot of ways that could be something a sort of solution um, for a lot of like natural resource saving and things like that as well don't you think mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree with you you know um this is definitely very sustainable, you know, to then, you know, making any physical product. Um, the good thing about AR is it doesn't really, you know, cost anything other than <laughs> electricity. Uh, and uh, especially when you think about it um, for a lot of situation that for um, any constructions, for our museum, when it, when they uh before they displaying any artwork, they usually shipping multiple art piece, you know, just to ensure that there's one good art piece can arrive into different countries, you know, in in uh, in the uh, trans, there's nothing goes wrong in the transportation, uh, so usually that kind of cause a lot of, um you know, money like in term of uh, uh import and export as well as insurance. Uh, but all those things can be replaced with AR because uh, you can preview all those uh, the artwork, the look and feel the material before you even um, have that model shipped to you. Uh, in the other side of things, we actually uh, in the um, last months we actually developed a cool prototype that lets you uh, preview on the uh, uh, future city skyline of New York uh, using AR. In that sense, you know, you can uh, preview, you know, any houses going to build, uh, what's the city going to look like, and all those things if, if building and using, like, for example, um, actual physical uh, piece, it, it, it does, you know, um, uh, you know, whether it's plastic, it does uh, affect, you know, the environment, and also um, uh, it's a good, great tool for architect to preview anything before anything to getting built, so they don't have to <laughs> build it again and again to just check the result. Yeah, um, similar for like um, before, you know, usually there's something pretty popular years ago called like three D printing. A lot of people do yeah. that, and they print it once and print twice, and <laughs> not good enough. They update it a little bit, but right now, if you using AR, it's a wonderful replacement for three D printing in a lot of ways. Some people just wanted to to put it the uh, 
the stuff you know on their desk the the uh, the actual um uh model right but now you know you don't have to do a lot of printing you know waiting for that to be printed out you can just using ar to display it on your desk it's definitely a space that potentially you know any curator able to use this to for planning purposes uh and uh we actually seeing a lot of people because this is uh, 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 you know, a creation platform that easily accessible for anyone, right? Even um, there's, you know, my cousin actually uses the software for for weddings. You know, um, to a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's going to be very hard, like flowers and this and that. It's going to cost a lot of money, and then you got throw away right after the wedding. But now, as they are, you do have anything you want. You want a horse. You know, like <laughs> you want anything <laughs> from the uh, uh, the uh, you know animations. You know, like. Uh, yeah, or you know like you have it like in they are um and i do think you know like from an, another standpoint just a lot of stuff like in the city right um for example like for businesses they printing out like posters you know on their on their walls you know on their windows uh and for city they they put out you know signs and you know labels and instruction and this and that uh and uh, eventually all those things going to be replaced by the digital items uh, and you know think about it if you wanted to um, for example that that kiosk you know machine for for any Starbucks or, or, or um, any uh, Burger King or something like that you no longer need to actually have that physical machine sitting there right um, but you can have an AR version of it you can actually what you want to eat you just click a button and the burger came out. <laughs> right, there was, you can pay it. So in the future, there's a lot of things. Um, AR could have a lot of beneficial to everyone. Um, but it's will take a, a couple of years to uh, get the hardware ready, and then the software will um, uh, while providing this kind of capability for doing potentially doing anything. Some artists do have the concern about. This discoverability, right? How mm -hmm. other people able to see my content if I placing somewhere here, and are people going to know I have something placed in a real environment? Um, this is definitely going to be an issue that when everyone is using mobile phones. So some of our solutions we currently are are working on is uh, the map integration. So uh, any artwork is going to be labeled on the map for you to discover. So you certainly know what is going to, uh, uh, what kind of stuff it's. Uh, at somewhere you know you able to follow the map and then get to that specific rb another part we are currently working on is the push notification so it's going to uh notify you you know when there are some artworks that's nearby or there's like new message or there's no message right like around you you can actually leave a message uh or create something and become the first one to uh sort of conquer that area <laughs> we're trying to getting a little bit more gamification in the entire or on the uh, the app kind of like a weight so you uh, have more sense of community in the platform. So it felt like not only you are contributing to the city, uh, everyone else, you know, who live in the same city are are doing this kind of AR creations uh, and decorations to help make the city a better place. Yeah, I think uh, there are so many different uses for that. And just earlier today, I heard about one of the major art fairs in the world. They had um, enabled not push notifications, but they'd worked with marketing I think it was for maybe Uber and whenever anybody booked a ride to the art fair, then it would kind of come up to promote the different artists. So I kind of see a use for something like that where, you know, um, if you're going to an art festival, maybe it, you know, can pop up and, you know, alert you to like this different artist artwork and help push sales for them and make it more accessible to patrons and collectors as well. So, yeah. Okay, uh, so. I think there's a, there's a lot of interest in um, uh, from festivals uh, and uh, uh, or different kind of events. Already been uh, reached out by a lot of um, different uh, organizers, and they're really interested to um, uh, have the uh, Planet XR um, as part of their uh, event and festival. Uh, we're going to be um, uh, helping and empowering the uh, York Mural at Toronto uh, in August this year. So. Uh, uh, it's an open air uh, art events, um, and now they're going to have like the uh, um, AR contents to be uh, uh, displayed in the entire street. Yeah, so amazing. Is this the uh, same thing? I know you are saying that um, you have plans this year 
um, to be working with augmenting different murals as well? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a request from uh, a lot of community as well as the cities. Uh, a lot of our uh, um, you know, government department, they, they actually uh, wanted to have their existing mural to be uh, enhanced. So people will understand the history, the background, and the about a specific mural, right? We can add more audio to it. We can add in uh, the artist profile, the artist information, uh, and or make the mural animated or adding 3D models that are coming out from the mural itself. So there's a lot of things we can help the city to uh, work on those those kind of projects. Yeah, I think that's an amazing use. I haven't really um, thought about that, but enhancing the existing public art is an incredible idea and might kind of, you know, bring more interest for it in a sense. It's sort of preserving that artwork because it's, you know, using technology to get uh, a new audience interested in it and appreciating it as well. So very neat. Um, well, Jason, thank you. It was great talking to you. I don't know if you had anything else um, you wanted to share with our viewers. Hey, uh please, you know, follow our uh, social media, uh, which is Planet XR. Uh, I think we called Planet X uh, AR on Twitter. <laughs> so um, <laughs> other than Twitter, everything uh, everywhere else is called Planet XR. You can search it uh, or uh, anywhere and you should be able to find our official um, uh, account and you can follow it. Um, if you want to download the uh, Planet XR app, you can search it in the app store uh, and then play around with yourself and or, uh, or uh, you know share the app with anyone you think might be interested. And uh, if there's an artist who has, you know, specific questions or some sort of gallery or anyone that wants to reach out with questions, um, how is it best for them to reach out? Reach out on the website. We do have a contact us uh, page. Uh, the second way will be the uh, uh, the uh, Discord channel. We have a community for artists, uh, whether you are a digital artist, public artist, or any artist who are uh, just interested about our platform, already join our Discord channel. We have a lot of uh, discussions about AR. We showcase a lot of work that anyone did around the world uh, since the world scale uh, applications. So there's people doing all sorts of AR ads, um, um, uh, art uh, around the world. And then you able to check out their work in our Discord. So you can definitely uh, 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 find us in our Discord. Uh, and lastly, it will be um, our uh, email. Uh, and I can always put yeah, that in. Yeah, I can probably put sure. that into the bottom. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, uh, I think, yeah, I, I don't remember the specific uh, uh, email address, but I, you can put it down below or um, as uh, orally. <laughs> okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I definitely will. So uh, thank you so much. It was great talking with you and learning about oh, Planet nice. XR. So, Thanks. all right.